Welcome to my discussion. I guess it's a continuing discussion. I have two goals in this pancast. One is to look at the fair value adjustment account for a period of more than one year. Remember, it's a balance sheet account, and the balance carries forward. It can be positive or negative. And two, look at the effect of gains or unrealized gains. And of course, the same would be true of losses as well for more than one year. They kind of go together, these two context, or these two examples. So let's look at them in a more advanced pincast relating just to those two topics. And now assuming you understand basic entries to purchase investment, the entries to record the dividends, and the entries to sell investment. I'm going to, for a matter of simplicity, focus on purchasing stocks in this discussion, but the same would hold true for bonds. Let's assume I've made two investments over the year. I'm not going to flag this to available for sale or trading. I'm just going to call it investment A. So I buy 100 shares of investment A for $15 per share, debit investment, credit cash, $1,500. During that same year, I purchase investment B. I buy 100 shares of investment B for $20 a share for a total of $2,000. I now have two investments, investment A at $15 a share and investment B at $20 a share. Let's assume our year end value at the end of year one for A is $16 per share for investment B is $21 per share. So, let's do a little analysis. Our cost of investment A was $1,500, and our cost of investment B was $2,000. But at year end, our value of investment A was $100 times $16 per share, so it's now $1,600. And our fair value of investment B is $21 a share for $100, so it's now $2,100. Hence, our total cost is $3,500, but our total market is $3,700. There is a $200 difference. In fact, the stock in the aggregate, meaning the total of the two, has gone at $200 would need to make a year-end adjustment for at end of year one. I haven't said whether this is trading or available for sale, so I'm just going to make a generic entry. I'm going to debit an account called Fair Value Adjustment, Adjunct Asset Account, writing the investment up by $200, and credit unrealized holding gain Sometimes I refer to that as unrealized gain. As long as it's unrealized, you know what it is. I'm not specifying which statement it goes to, whether the income statement or owner's equity, because I haven't said what type of investment it is. What I want you to focus on is I now have an account, a balance sheet account, called Fair Value Adjustment, and it had nothing in it to start with. Let's assume this is our first period doing investments. And I need it to have a balance of 200 in it. And so I make that entry. I debit it for 200. And I now have a balance in the fair value account of $200. Let's proceed to year two. I'm feeling rather optimistic, so I'm going to have increases. The only difference would be if it were decreases that I write fair value down and let it be negative even. But in my case, the stock increased again. The value of A at the end of year 2 is 17, and the value of stock B is 22. Let's do a little analysis of that. Our cost is still 3500 That's not going to change, but our fair value has changed. For investment A, it's now 17 times 100, or 1,700, and for investment being 22 times 100, or 2,200. The difference between the two in aggregate is now $400.
At this point, I'm currently focusing only on the fair value adjustment account. So let's bring the balance forward from last year. Its beginning balance is $200. This account is only adjusted at year end, no other time. So it will be sitting at what I left it at the end of the last period. According to my adjustment I just or analysis I just did, I now need it to be $400 because that's the difference between the cost and the fair value of the portfolio. So that's going to lead to an adjustment. Again, a fair value adjustment at year end. We'll debit fair value adjustment for a number and we'll credit unrealized holding gain or loss. Again, I'm not specifying what kind of an investment, just leave that alone for a minute. How much does it take to get from 200 to 400? I need to write it up for another $200. I'm emphasizing to you it's a balance sheet account and whatever I left it at last time is carried forward and I write it up simply for the difference. Let's move on now going to move on to looking what happens at year in number three. But I'm going to back up for just a second before I do that, because during year three, I want to sell some stock. For my example, during year three, I want to sell investment A in its entirety, and I'm going to sell it for $2,100. So, what is the entry to record that? Well, I'm going to get some cash in the amount of $2,100, and I need to credit investment A, again, not saying if it's short, if it's trading or available for sale, is saying it's investment A, and pick up a gain or loss for the difference. What was our balance in investment A? I'm going to take you back to the original entry, because we have $1,500 in investment A, so that's what I need to credit. I'm taking it out at cost. And then I have a gain on sale of investment in the amount of the difference. 1500 minus 2100 is 600. Note, I picked up the cash at the amount that I received, but I relieved investment A at its cost. I have never changed that account. I do have a fair value account that adjusted its balance, but investment A has never been altered. And it's no longer an unrealized gain. It's just called a gain on sale of investment for the difference. Also notice that I am not making an adjustment when the sale takes place to the fair value account. That happens at year end. So now we'll go to year end for year number three and we'll do a fair value analysis. Let's say the fair value of investment B. I'm being really optimistic in this example, say the fair value of investment B has gone up to a whopping $29 per share. Cool. Let's analyze where we are. The investment account for balance for investment B is $20 a share. When we bought, it's still at $20 a share. But its fair value is now $2,900. I don't have any other investments. If I did, I would add them in here. But I don't, so my total portfolio is 20000 but the fair value is 2000 <laughs> The fair value is 2900 So the difference is 900 Let's bring forward our fair value account that's only adjusted at year end. So we have a fair value adjustment account. Last year, we left that account at... $400, and so this year, its beginning balance is, you got it, $400. I now need the balance in that account to be 900 
as shown in our analysis. So I need to make a year-end adjusting entry to make that happen. What do I need to change it from 400 to 900? I need to put in 500. So I'll debit the fair value adjustment. Sometimes I write FBA, sometimes I write it out. Either way, same thing. And again, an unrealized holding gain or loss this time. I've been very positive during this, haven't I? It's always gains. I could use some in my life right now. Fair value adjustment of 500. Unrealized holding gain of 500. So the fair value account is adjusted at year end to be what you need it to be. It isn't ever adjusted other than that. It is unaffected for sales and purchases. At year end, you simply look at what it is and take it to what you need it to be. It can be an increase or decrease. It can be positive or negative. The stock market goes up and down. We have had it be positive because I have been being an optimist. I think I've accomplished my first objective and that's showing you how to do the accounting for that fair value account for more than one year. You figure out what its balance is, you figure out what you need it to be, and you make it be that. So, moving on to our second objective, I want to look at the effect of unrealized gains and losses on the financial statements. In order to do that, I now have to decide, was it a trading investment? Or was it available for sale? Because as you realize from our previous discussions on this topic, you're going to get different answers. Let's first do trading. In trading investments on our income statement for year one, we showed the unrealized gain because unrealized gains go to the income statement. We would have picked up 200 for year one. We would have picked up 200 for year two. In year three, we actually sold some stock and we had a realized gain, if you recall, in the amount of 600. And we had another unrealized gain. Whoop, well, maybe took up too much room on that, didn't I? In our final, our third and final year of 500. Our total impact, our total income for the three year period would be 2,000 plus another 2, or 200 plus another 2, 400, plus 6 from the real gain, it's 1,000, plus 5 from the unrealized gain for that third year. So our total gains picked up in the income statement for the whole period was $1,500. Now let's consider the investments. When we purchased the two investments, 1500 and 2000 we spent $3,500 for them. The fair value of A, when we sold it, was 2100 The fair value of B, at the end of the third year, was 5000 So the total gains, both unrealized and realized, should equal 1500 Now go back to the income statement, and you see that it does. It shows that we've had... $1,500 worth of gains, 500, or 600 of that was realized, and 900 of that was unrealized. 2, 4, and 5, 900 unrealized, 600 realized, total 15, and that's what the income statement has picked up. How's the balance sheet doing? throughout all of this. Well, at the end of year three, we have an investment account, and we have the fair value account on it. The fair value account, let's put our headings up here so we can see where we are. The fair value account, fair value adjustment, exists in the amount of $900. That's where we left it. And we are writing up the investment by $900, the investment account itself for investment B, 
be, is it 2,000? We add this 900 to take it to 2,900, so that makes sense. And what's happening on stockholders' equity? All of that has ran through retained earnings. An entire 1,500. Year one was closed into it. Year two was closed into it. Year three was closed into it. Everything ran through the income statement. So the fair value account exists. The amount of 900 at the end of the period. And all of it has ran through retained earnings. Let's look at available for sell now. Nothing ran through the income statement in year one. Nothing ran through the income statement in year two. In year three, we had an actual gain of $600, and that went through the income statement. So the only amount of income that has been recognized to date in total for the three years, total income has only been $600. Let's look at our balance sheet. Some more interesting on this one because we have comprehensive income. We're at the end of year three. The balance sheets capture facts at the end of a period of time. And retained earnings over the three-year period has gone up for the $600 because, of course, that's been closed into it. We also have a fair value adjustment sitting on the balance sheet in the amount of $900. That fair value adjustment has not ran through the income statement. It's sitting in the account comprehensive income in the amount of 900. So the total gain of 1500, which we analyzed while looking at the trading, of that 600 has been realized and is sitting in retained earnings, and 900 hasn't, and it's sitting in comprehensive income. And cases, the fair value adjustment is sitting at $900, and in both cases, we're showing on the balance sheet the investments at fair value. Let's summarize, then. Let's look first at trading investments. Unrealized gain or loss is recognized in net income. Its balance rolls forward in the fair value adjustment, and its entirety is included in retained earnings because every year it's been picked up in retained earnings. It's not the same for available for sale investments. Unavailable for sale, unrealized gains and losses is not ran through the income statement. It sits in the fair value adjustment, much like the trading investments. But it is recorded in comprehensive income. The only thing affecting retained earnings is actual sales. So we recognize actual sales in, of investments in retained earnings, but the amount of the fair value adjustment lives in comprehensive income. Thanks for joining me on summarizing and learning about trading investments and available for sale, looking specifically what happens to the fair value adjustment, and how it affects the financial statements. Thanks. Have a good day.